Hi, welcome back to the Interaxis YouTube channel and Interaxis.io. We're going to keep talking about stable coins here, and of course, if you want to keep getting these videos and keep being updated as soon as we release new ones, subscribe to the channel here, uh, check us out on Twitter at Interaxis8, send us an email, info at Interaxis.io, and remember that we're, we're starting to launch courses for financial advisors, because we want those financial advisors to understand uh, cryptocurrency, investing, blockchain, decentralized finance and such, so that they can help their clients uh, now, and especially the clients of the future that are going to be looking at, at this, but don't forget to subscribe here. So now we're going to move on with more stable points, and in this one we're going to talk about these, some of these synthetic dollars that are created. And I call them synth USDs. They don't always have to be in the, in the synthetics network, but in, in plenty of other networks, they are creating a version of the US dollar. Okay, so why, why are they doing this? So there is, uh, in, in the synthetic network, there's SUSD. There is, in the uh, Gemini, the, the trading platform has created GUSD. Um, some of the other uh, networks and the other um, uh, synthetic uh, platforms, protocols have created their own. So uh, Yuma has a, a USD uh, related token. Um, there are you know, several other synthetic USDs. There, you know, M Stable has one now. So the, the idea is they want to create several other types of, of tokens that essentially aim to represent a dollar. Okay, so for instance on the synthetics network, when I lock up my synthetics tokens, my SNX tokens in here, so I buy an SNX, which is an ERC20 uh, token, I lock it up here and I mint SUSD. And why do they want me to do that? Because I'm minting the, the SUSD based on whatever SNX tokens are worth at the time, at this 750% collateralization ratio, it's much like uh, MakerDAO was doing, where Maker has 150% collateralization. This has 750% at the time, and I'm into SUSD. And then the, the point originally was I would use SDSD, SUSD in the synthetics um, exchange, so I would trade it for other synthetic assets and mint other synthetic assets using SUSD as the stable backing, right? So if I'm minting, for instance, uh, synthetic gold, I think they, they have a, a synthetic gold, I don't remember what their symbol was, then if I know that gold is currently trading for $1,800 in the, in the traditional world, then S gold, synthetic gold, should trade for $1,800 SUSD. But of course, because these are tokenized, I don't have to buy a full ounce of gold. I don't have to use a full one one USD. Okay, I can because they're tokenized. They can go out several decimal places, and I can make these trade in a, in a synthetic format. So they created this synthetic USD, this token that mirrors the value of the dollar initially for performance for use within their own exchange. Well, of course, since it's an ERC-20 token, I can use it anywhere. So now I've been able to take SUSD out of the, the synthetic system and be able to trade it anywhere just like I can DAI or USDC or anything else. So they've created this uh, synthetic USD. Uh, Yuma Protocol did the has done kind of the same thing where they, they've allowed me to use their oracles to uh, create my own synthetic assets, and one of the ones I can create is a dollar. GUSD Gemini, which of course is the, the big um, exchange and, and custodian uh, th that is run, they created their own GUSD, and they created it so they're, especially their institutional investors, because they have a lot of institutional investors, would be able to trade an exchange um, with, you know, Bitcoin and ETH and some of the other you know, really big cryptocurrencies against a dollar, but they don't want to have to hold all those dollars. The same reason why Tether was created. Well, they have GUSD that was created, and they're, they're actually backed by real dollars, but that way you can trade within the Gemini ecosystem, and they can maintain some sort of control over the value of it. They maintain that, that they can have those dollars to back it. 
So now what we're seeing is these synthetic ones. We also have, for instance, TUSD, which is on the, the Tezos network. So on Tezos, um, where we see a lot of security tokens being created, well now you have uh, a USD equivalent there. So now what we can have on the Tezos system is we can have DeFi type applications, DeFi type protocols built on Tezos that, that now interact potentially with the security tokens that are built. So if I have a security token, potentially uh, th that is on the Tezos blockchain and maybe it pays a distribution, maybe the distribution or the dividend for that, maybe it's a real estate token gets paid in in Tether or, or in Tezos USD, in TUSD, that maybe I can then go exchange for a, or an actual dollar some point, somewhere I can go and exchange that for fiat currency for a dollar. Or I just might want to buy other Tezos tokens or something like that. But that but everyone's having to create some sort of stable coin, some sort of US dollar equivalent to trade on their system because they don't want to be beholden necessarily to the performance of DAI. They don't want to necessarily be beholden to Circle that runs US, uh, USDC or to Tether, which as we know doesn't really have a backing. They say, no, no, we need to keep this tight in our own little ecosystem, so we want to control the value of the, of the USD on the Tezos blockchain, so we create t TUSD. We want to create it, we, we want to control it a bit more on the synthetics platform, on the synthetics exchange, so we need to create our own version Version, uh, of something that represents a dollar. Okay, same with Gemini. It makes it easier for and more efficient for accounting purposes, right? Because now you have something that's programmable. Because what you really need is a programmable dollar. And in order for them to make it easily programmable, just make it programmable either on their own chain or within their own network where they can have some level of control. Because if I'm an institutional investor and I have a, you know, uh, a couple million dollars worth of cryptocurrency custody with Gemini and I want to trade it in and out potentially, well, I don't want to go into fiat currency. And Gemini says we don't want to deal with having to also bring in DAI because what if DAI goes to $1.20? Then we have issues with, with how we're accounting accounting for everything, and they go, no, no, we'll just create our own dollar, and when you're trading on our network, trust us, it's still worth a dollar. If you want to trade out your GUSD for a dollar, we'll give you fiat currency for it, but if you need to trade, you can do so there. Uh, same with, uh, since, since BlockFi custody with Gemini, you can, uh, you can actually use GUSD and, and get loans and borrow and such and, and lend within BlockFi using GUSD. So that is just a little bit about some of these synthetic USDs that have been created. It's just an, uh, a way now for some of these networks, exchanges, um, other chains, whatever they might be, to create their own uh, token that represents a dollar so that mainly they can have this programmable money that they can easily exchange, easily account for, and they're not necessarily beholden to some other system. Now the, the the thing to watch out for is, are these all actually worth a dollar? Can I trade one synthetic USD for one GUSD? Can I use M, you know, the, the MUSD, whatever it might be? Can, can I exchange those always for a dollar? Is one SUSD always worth one die, always worth one USDC? And they aren't always like that. So there are arbitrage opportunities. There, there are uh, yield farming opportunities to, to capitalize on that arbitrage. And that arbitrage actually is really what helps keep them all worth roughly a dollar. Because if all of a sudden you had the value of die go up to a dollar twenty, someone would arbitrage that opportunity and say, no, we'll, we'll make the exchange between DAI and SUSD or between DAI and USDC. And eventually what we would see is this value would get back from $1.20 down to $1. So that's just a real quick on some of these synthetic US dollars. And I don't mean synthetic like the actual synthetics uh, network. I mean synthetic like they have just been created essentially as accounting entries but programmable and, and on-chain. So that's a little bit about some of these kind of synthetic US dollar tokens that have been created uh, within the, the different blockchain ecosystems and the different layers uh, mainly for accounting, trading, exchange purposes. So that's a little bit about those. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it made sense.
Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel here so you can get more of our, of our content. Uh, check out our website, www.interaxis.io. On Twitter, we're at Interaxis8, uh, and we hope to see you in the next video.